How's everyone doing today? I hope that your week has gone off to a great start so far. Well, I'm your host, actually, she make around my house in Gilbert, Arizona, and I couldn't be more excited than to have on one of the top centers in all the country, in Bovacar Calabelli, and a star forward from the class of 2022 that you're going to be hearing a lot about really soon, in Joshua Jefferson, to the fourth and final episode of the Dream Vision series. Now, you're going to want to stay up to date, because I've got some very special things coming up, including four commitment episodes, in line with some of the top recruits that have recently committed. But that's just leading up to one of the biggest series I've yet to have on choose views, being the Compton Magic series. So make sure to go and follow me at Zach Schumacher on Instagram and Twitter. With that being said, let's hop right in. I'm blessed to be able to welcome the 29th ranked center in the class of 2020, the 22nd ranked player in California, a three-star and top 200 player who has offers from schools like USC, Colorado, California, and many more and one of the stars of Dream Vision and the star of San Gabriel Academy, Bubikar Calabelli, which is the fourth episode of the Dream Vision series. How are you doing today? Yep, that's great. That's awesome. So let's just jump right in and talk about Dream Vision. So what led you to decide to go play for them? Uh, because it's a, it's a great club first. When mm-hmm. first I came here from my country, I directly came uh, to Coach Clay. So he took me to Dream Vision for practice workout all those stuff mm-hmm. and then i start to play i played 15 and 16 the same year it was a great experience for me and also i got a lot of scholarship were there any other teams you're considering or just was dream vision the one team you knew you're going to go to um he always been my favorite club team mm-hmm. i That's i like the coaches i like the coaches i i like the players and i like how um we connected and I, love, I like also how we play and mm-hmm. how the coaches, like, talk to you. And um, um, they make sure you're doing the right thing in the right place. Also, they take care of you. Mm-hmm. It, was like, Absolutely. It, was like, it was like a little family for me. And that's definitely important. I mean, especially coming from anywhere. I mean, just being able to make a family connection with friends is something special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So talk about some of your teammates you play with. I mean, Dream Vision has a lot of great players, but talk about some of the guys that you've connected with and some of the guys you played alongside. Um, I play with Dominic. I mm-hmm. play with Coleman. I play with Alison. I play with Ian. I play with uh, Dimbari. I play with uh, uh, Will. I play with um, Isaiah Kucho. Mm-hmm. I play with um, Frankie. So all those players are um, uh, good friends to me, and they're special. Like you said, all those guys are great. Like, it's a family, like a lot of coaches have all talked about. Yeah. I mean, especially having all those, once again, just having all those guys you can talk to, and, I mean, you're going to be playing with them, or at least knowing them for many years to come in the basketball world. Yeah, exactly. What would you say in this past year has been, like, your favorite moment with Dream Vision or your favorite play you've had? Uh, it's probably at the camps because, like, if we pass, like, the all year, we don't, we don't see each other and mm-hmm. then we're just texting. So, at the camp, like, when you come up the camp, like, they're, like, super friendly. Like, be like, Bubakar, what's up, bro? Yeah, you grow. All those stuff, you know. It's, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it was special to me. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm from Africa. Um, I'm down here with no friend, all those stuff, but they act like they, they know me forever. It was, mm-hmm. like... It was it was special to me and it was fun. Like I like the camps and mm-hmm. I, everything like that. And, and the coaches also, they're like super super close to me and we connected. Like I like how they give me advice and also we talk about some other stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. What's one aspect of your game you've really worked on and you've really tried to improve and work on this past summer? Um, I gotta work on my shooting group because I've been when I've been here. So I was working a lot on my post move on like big men stuff a lot. I wasn't playing hard like aggressive. I wasn't aggressive at all. So this past two years I was I was working on my aggressivity like in the court, like to be mean and to hit people like to play hard and with um energy one hundred percent. So right mm-hmm. now I gotta bring my shots back. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And improve on my free throws a lot. That's that's my goal right now. Definitely. I mean, I think it's kind of obvious that when you get the ball down low, or I mean, when someone throws the ball up for an alley oop, I mean, you're gonna get. There's not many people that can guard you down low, but I mean, if you can add that jump shot, 
I don't know who else can guard you, period. Yeah. One of those camps you attended this summer was the Pangos one. I mean, you had one of those highlight plays, a couple blocks that are big time, but talk about what you gained from that playing in the Pangos camp and some of your favorite parts about that. Uh, my favorite part was uh, the second game at core one. Because mm-hmm. at that game, um, at the first game, I didn't play that good. And the second game, I find myself. Because uh, when you find yourself like in the middle of um, the best player in the country, it's kind of hard to to like to bring your everything you have in your pocket but so I kind of find myself on the second game and the third game so it was mm-hmm. it was it was a great experience to me because I saw a lots of player like big biggest biggest than me and mm-hmm. stronger than me sometimes like they they most of them are more athletic than I am so it was a kind of experience to me and um, it told me I gotta keep working you know to be one of the best player in the country also so my goal is to get in the league so if yes I gotta keep working all the time I can't mm-hmm. give up uh, the camp encouraged me to to play more like to to work more on what I'm not good at mm-hmm. so uh, it kind of opened my eyes to the basketball world you want know, to go against a lot of the top players helps you to see kind of where you're at and like yes. you said I guess gets to help you work towards where you want to be I mean because you know you're going to college, and then from there it's getting ready to go to the NBA, which is going to be an awesome experience. Yeah. You've obviously got a lot of offers that keep coming in. Talk about some of your favorite ones and some of the things that you're really looking at right now. Um, uh, in college, I don't have any dream college. So mm-hmm. I, I'm looking for a college that I can play. Um, I can show uh, what I can do, like if the coaches give me a chance to show myself, uh, I want to work on my game, and I want also in college to be able to shoot and to don't just be a big man in college. I wanna mm-hmm. like learn everything because today in today basketball, um, there is seven footer shooters. They shoot trees, they they dribble, you know. They mm-hmm. they hit gem shots, all those stuff. So I'm looking for a college who will let me do um, uh, all those work. Not just mm-hmm. don't just let me do it, but so to work on it, to be great on it. You know, you understand what I'm saying? For sure. There's so many guys that can just go in the post and dunk it and all, but if you can add that other part of the game, the shooting and the ball handling, you could be not just an end the NBA, but you could be an all star. I mean, you look at a lot of the guys like Porzingis. I think is the prime guy. I mean. Of course, you had Dirk. There's so many of these guys right now you see that are these stretch forwards that make it forever in the NBA. I mean, that could easily be you. Yeah. Do you have any idea or kind of an estimate or goal when you think you're going to commit? Um, I don't know yet. I'm still looking for uh, the best college. Um, mm-hmm. I want to start my season, like, strong, super strong. So to see if I'm going to get some more offer and then mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, uh, take my final decision after I examine all those college and after taking some visitors to know um, what those college can do for me. Just making sure you're in the right place. I mean, there's not really a rush to it. If you find one early on, it's great, but being able to make sure you go to the right college is obviously key. Exactly. So you're getting ready to go play in your high school season. So talk about why you decided to originally attend San Gabriel Academy. Um, San Gabriel Academy. So my coach um, in San Gabriel Academy was uh, coaching uh, in Dream Vision also mm-hmm. when first I came. So uh, I like San Gabriel because when I came down here, I didn't know how to play big man post. I don't. I was like a weak, very weak player. So they show me a uh, different style. I think it's because San Gabriel, I got this all those offer because it mm-hmm. gave me play like what the colleges want to see, rebounding, you know, blocking shots, you know, box out, dunking, all those stuff. I got all those mm-hmm. things from San Gabriel Academy. They developed my basketball. They kind of show me the most important part in the basketball, which is rebounding and blocking shots. That's the two most important things. Like that's what, what the college is looking at you. So I kind of like San Gabriel. Because they don't just um, uh, they don't just bring player and just don't play them and use them. Also, they they they, uh, they develop the players. That's why I like San Gabriel. Okay. So, in uh, academically, you got a lot of help from teachers and tutoring all the stuff to get your stuff done. 
to have a good grade and to be eligible to go to mm-hmm. college, you know. It's not mm-hmm. just about basketball. That's one of the great things from St. Gabriel Academy. That second part you just talked about is very key. I mean, always make sure you keep the grade because, I mean, hopefully, and I think basketball will work out for you, but you never know. I mean, any injury, anything could happen to anyone. To have that education will last the rest of your life, which is awesome to have. Exactly. Talk about some of your teammates and the guys that play alongside you at San Gabriel. Um, uh, we, I play with Alison. I play with Ian McCloskey. I play with uh, Randy. I play with uh, Luis Riascos. Um, I play with JT, uh, with Javian, uh, with Luke, uh, Scotty, um, also Jose. Those are um, my teammates from San Gabriel Academy. They're special to me also because mm. they play hard, they practice hard. They like my brothers. Um, I like their energy, and they all great players. I think we're all going to make it. And have another brotherhood that you can have that will last for the rest of your life. Yeah. What do you think your role will be on the team this year? Um, in the team, I got to be a leader. Mm-hmm. I got to lead my team and push them hard. Like I got to push my team, lead my team, pass through their hard time they, when they get tired, to be um, there when they need. And in the game, I got to be loud. I got to be um, uh, aggressive. I got to grab every rebound for my team because I'm 6'10", six, uh, six, and I'm the only 6'10 in the San Gabriel. So it's kind of um, a big advantage for my team. So I got to be useful for my team. Also, mm-hmm. I got to offensively, I got to execute. I got to be aggressive. For you, what are some of the biggest goals that you have set? Yeah, I remember when we played um, Bishop Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't play very good on the first half. But in the second half, I was awake. And then we, my team started to lead my team. And we started to come up. But we lost by 20. Um, I want to, in this, this year, I want to... Um, uh, I want to start the game strong and finish strong, and that is not just about one game. It's like all of all of all of them, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially against uh, those uh, great players and those big school, we gotta we gotta be on the court all the time and play one hundred percent. That's um, and also um, my free throws. I gotta work on my free throws a lot. So I think I'm getting there. Um, Right now, I think free throw is not going to be my problem this during the season because I work a lot um, during this summer. big part of you is coming over from Mali. So talk about that and talk about your, your life back then and what kind of helped you or transitioned you to be able to come to America to play basketball? Um, when I was in Mali, um, I was playing basketball. Um, it was super, super hard. It was hard because we couldn't... Um, the transportation, it was like kind of hard for us because where we playing was like super far and we have to um, come from school and then go go play basketball and we came late and they we gotta you gotta do your homework you know and you gotta go to school the next day you gotta make sure you do everything right so mm-hmm. it was kind of hard but down here the schedule is um is easy because basketball um training time is um part of the schedule you know it's, it's much easier down here and the transportation is um, you don't have to go anywhere because on the school have the gym so it's kind of easy down here and mm-hmm. uh, when I was in Mali I was invited at a camp called um, Mali Camp did by Tidian Drame it's from Guinea um, mm-hmm. he did the camp in my country so I was selected and that's how I got here in 2016 Definitely having all the different opportunities to be able to make a name for yourself and get discovered are awesome. God always has crazy paths to be able to find a way to get to where he wants you to be. And once you're able to find those paths and you keep following those paths, it's obviously something awesome to see. Yeah. When you play, is there a sense of like pride that you come with being from Mali and that you want to represent them wherever you go? Um, not really. But last summer when I went back to my country, I bring in new shoes with me. So I... Um, gave to some of my, of my friends to sign it, and mm-hmm. my friends also. So I wear those those shoes on to play games with it. So that's like mm, representing my country, kinda, mm-hmm. and the love from my friends. You know, 
That's awesome. Being one of the top players in the country, I mean, you're obviously a top 25 player in California. So to, what does that bring with them? I mean, do you get kind of like a sense of confidence or pressure or motivation or what does it kind of bring with it by being a top player? Um, being one of the top players in, in California, I'm mm-hmm. proud because um, uh, it's not a gift to everybody. So I'm proud, but it kind of pushed me to work because if you are one of the best players in the, in the state, so you got to you gotta improve again. So it's not about just the state. You got to be one of the best, the best players in the country. So and then go to college and get drive, so all those stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm not like too proud, but uh, I'm not. I'm happy with it, but I'm not I'm very very happy with it. So I'm gonna keep working, and it kind of push me to work hard again. You always push yourself to be the best is what ma- makes people the best players. Mm-hmm. So is there a player that you model your game after in the NBA or in college? Um, I watch a lot Kevin Durant. And also, I like Yanis, so I like their style. They're special to me because with mm-hmm. their um, their high, the length, they're super athletic, and they are guard. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. It's uh, it's impressive. So I'm wanna combine both of those players to be um, special. But um, I don't have a specific um, favorite player. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I watch colleges a lot. I don't watch NBA a lot. I watch the next level, like colleges. That's my next mm-hmm. level. So I watch colleges a lot. Um, I like um, um, uh, DeAndre when he, he was um, playing for um, Arizona. He he got drafted um, in 2018. Mm-hmm. I watch him a lot. I like his style. I think uh, he's pretty athletic and he's disciplined on the court. Um, he's strong and he 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 was a big time player to me. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. I mean, always be able to see those players, like you said. I mean, watching where you're going to go next. I mean, so you can, you can kind of prepare yourself and know what it's going to be like when you get there. Mm-hmm. Why do you fall in love with basketball? And what do you like the most about playing it? Um, uh, basketball is like my second life. Um, basketball mm-hmm. is, it means a lot to me because when I'm playing it, it makes me happy. It makes like, I feel good once I play basketball. It's like, it's something I need. It's like food. Like when you're hungry, you got to eat. Also, I'm playing all this like to, to I don't want to do something that uh, like halfway. I want to do it like to the end. Like I'm going to, I want to play basketball. But I will play basketball. So to get in the league, I want to get a lot of money. Also, mm-hmm. but it's like it's love. It's not just about money. It's something I love to do, and I wanted to do, also because I don't want to depend on my family, all those stuff. So I want to um, follow my own path and be the best I can be later in my life. To be proud of what I did once I get older, and um, it's a big example for. The next generation. Who in your life would you say has been your biggest role model? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Big question. Oh, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a tricky question. <laughs> There's so many different people in different aspects of your world that you could choose so many role models. Mm-hmm. I would like to wrap up talking about God because I'm a believer in God and I just want to know, how do you think God's helped you the most throughout your career? Oh, yeah. That God was a big part for me in my life. He was, um, I know God was with me. Um, mm-hmm. I'm Muslim. I think God helped me because um, everywhere, every, everywhere I go, I meet nice people. You know, they ready to help me. Like when I came down here to Coach Clay, take me to Dream Vision all the stuff, I get all the scholarship and all the coaches like love me, you know. And after I was, um, I went to uh, uh, St. Gabriel Academy, the coaches love me. I like the players, I like the teachers. I'm getting good grades, like they help me with my uh, stuff to get, um, so I can graduate, all the stuff. So mm-hmm. I think all this is because God, um, the, he, 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 he kind of opened and helped me to to be uh, with all those uh, nice people because um, everybody doesn't have uh, this chance um, to be 
um, with those people and to gain the love. Absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for joining me today, bro. I can't wait to see what God's got in store for you from here on out. It's definitely going to be special. I can't wait to see where you commit and obviously how you finish the rest of your career. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. No problem. God bless. God bless. Stay right there. You're not going to miss what's coming up next. As one of the top rising stars of the 2022 class and Joshua Jefferson joins the show. You're not going to miss hearing what he say as he's picked up his very first offer from Texas A&M. He had a rising four that didn't get a chance to play in varsity last year due to state rules, but this upcoming year he's going to come out strong and then the whole world will learn his name. So you're not going to miss hearing from what he has to say. All of his episode and interview is coming up next. I'm excited to be able to welcome one of the top players from Las Vegas, one of the top forwards in the class of 2022, who has recently received an offer from Texas A&M. He's one of the bright young pieces on Liberty High and a star of the 15U Dream Vision Squad, Joshua Jefferson, the fourth episode of the Dream Vision series. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. So let's jump right in. I mean, you just wrapped up being able to play with Dream Vision for your 15U season. So talk about why you originally decided to go play with them. I decided to go play with Dream Vision because my team in Vegas didn't work out. So then my older brother, he played with Dream Vision a few years ago. And then it's kind of like a connection that we built. So then mm-hmm. they asked me to play with them in like... Uh, March. I was like, yeah, I'm down. And then that's mm-hmm. how it started. Are there any other club teams you're considering or just kind of, you you heard from Dream Vision you really just wanted to go there? Yeah. That that was pretty much it. Gotcha. Um, I guess had a pretty solid team for 15U. Talk about some of the guys that were leading the team alongside you. Corey Yeager helped a lot with scoring because there's really nobody in the country that can stay in front of him, in my opinion. And mm-hmm. um, Jeremiah Nyarko. He's a really good rim protector and runs the floor really well and dunks the ball hard whenever we need him to. Coach Dunklin, he came on and talked about that. I know all the coaches are super high on you and Corey. You guys definitely are loaded for the future. Yeah, yeah. Is there like a certain player moment that really stands out to you from this past club season? It was really fun winning that Compton Magic tournament. It was mm-hmm. like our best tournament. We all played well together and clicked at the right time. That's awesome. So is there one thing you're really focused on trying to work on and improve on for this upcoming season? I'm trying to work on my ball handling and trying to be more like a guard. Overall shooting, pull-ups, threes, mid-range. What would you say would be like one of the highlights of the whole of your experience playing on Dream Vision? Rather than being on the court, off the court, your coaches, the teammates, what were some of the highlights you remember from this past season? Um, and back in Vegas around July, it was really surreal to me playing with 17s because I never thought that I would be able to, like, be invited or to play with them. And so it was really, I was really thankful for that opportunity I was given in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. I mean, that's something I mean, they talked about that. I mean, there's so much talent that a lot of you guys could all play really at any level. I mean, you guys are all capable of playing at any level, which is off of the sea. Yeah. Now you're getting ready to go play in high school. Why you originally decided to attend Liberty, though? I wanted to in Liberty because they have great academics and a pretty good athletic department because we've had a lot of players in all sports go D1. And mm-hmm. then my brother went there also. So then I already had a connection there. And it, was, it wasn't hard to get used to at all. Mm-hmm. Talk about your freshman year. I know you spent most of it on JV. So talk about your experience playing on JV last year. Playing on JV was cool, but like, the only reason I was on JV is because I I didn't live in a zone. So mm-hmm. then they make you play one. You have to spend 180 days playing a JV because you have to live in the zone to play varsity. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So I was on JV because I had to. It was not because of mm-hmm. any other reason. Yeah. Gotcha. Obviously, you're going into your sophomore year and you're going to have a much bigger role in on varsity. So talk about that and what your senior role is going to kind of look like this year. My role this year is to score in the post whenever I get the ball and make the open layups and crash the boards really hard because we're a lot smaller this year than last year. Really need to bound on boxing out and securing a ball. Most definitely. So is there something that you're most excited for this year? Um, I'm excited on the trips that we go on because they're a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, hopefully we can get it past the second round because at Liberty we haven't got past the second round in the whole, like, 13 years has been around or something like that. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So talk about some of the guys that's going to be on the team. 
I know, like I said, the, you guys have got a lot of players, like you said, a lot of D1 guys. Talk about some of the other guys that's going to help be a part of that team. Kobe Strader, he's a lot, he's very underrated in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And he played for UBO this past summer. And um, Dante Davis, he played with the Vegas Elite B team. He's He's really he's a really good spot up shooter. Talk about some of the guys in your class in Vegas that you see are like some of the top players that you're going alongside and you gotta come and kinda of represent Vegas for the next few years. The two top players would be Max Allen and Milo Uzon. I would mm-hmm. say Pop Pop Isaac, but he recently moved to Utah. Yeah. So I don't mm-hmm. really know if that counts, but like you really them three. Definitely, you guys got a lot of players and so many guys that keep coming in and out of there. I always like to say, I mean, it depends whatever a player wants to call their home. A lot of guys have been playing at least some basketball and usually born from Vegas that have been coming out, which is awesome to see. Yeah. So knowing that you're one of the top players in the state and you're going to soon keep getting notoriety, we're going to probably become one of the top players in the country. What is that like and what does it bring to you when you play the game? Um, since I'm very underrated, it doesn't bring a lot of pressure. I just know my what I have to do to go out there and compete and do whatever mm-hmm. I can to help my team win at that time. And I know that a lot of people are going to try to come after me. Mm-hmm. I just try to humble myself and not get too heavy-headed and know where I belong and what I have to do. It's always staying humble. God's always got a special path for everyone. And just knowing that he's going to get you to where he wants you to be is truly something that you just always have to embrace. And you know it's going to be something special. Yes, sir. But talking about college, I mean, you were able to pick up your first offer this summer at Texas A&M. Talk about that and what what it was like in your very first D1 offer. Um, I want to thank Texas A&M for the, being the first to believe in me because mm-hmm. there's a lot of teams that are like looking at me but don't want to offer. So I, it's really, it was really surreal to me when I got it because I was very happy and excited mm-hmm. for what they did. Definitely. So what was it like? Did you receive like a phone call or did he talk to you in person or did he call like someone at Dream Vision and they talked to you or how did that go down? My dad was the one that received the phone call because I'm not allowed to talk to them until, like, July of my junior year or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, usually, like, coaches have to talk through my high school coach, Dream Vision, or my dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that probably drew a lot of people's eyes. To get a bit, I mean, Texas A&M is a really big school. I mean, to have that as your very first offer is a big-time move. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Have you ever kind of – picture yourself in a certain kind of college uniform or you've always had like a dream college growing up growing up it was uh arizona but really Mm -hmm. i would like to stay on the west coast really i don't Mm -hmm. really have a dream school right now but yeah anything on the west coast would be cool definitely so in terms of a program there's like certain aspects you're looking for a coach that will build me up but also get in me whenever i do something wrong because Mm -hmm. I don't want to go anywhere thinking that, like, what I do is okay. Like, get, like, get me out of my comfort zone is really mm-hmm. the main point. Definitely. So talk about how your family is kind of – I mean, you talk about your brother, but talk about how he and the rest of your family has kind of guided you and helped get you to the point you're at today. My family is very um, supporting, and mm-hmm. they all help me with anything I got, like homework or with school – or whenever I have, like, basketball, because they used to play basketball, too. And then my dad, he's been through, like, the pros, like, going to college and going through the pros. He already mm-hmm. had that process, so he knows how to help me and make sure I'm on the right path. That's awesome. I mean, it's obviously so easy for any athlete. I mean, because you're going to have fame, especially being a top player. I mean, to be able to stay grounded and know that that time for fame will come, I mean, I would like to say, I mean, a lot of the guys that have a massive social media presence, if they're not, if they just get too embraced and just caring about social media and followers, it's not like they're getting paid yet. I mean, once you get to the NBA, you get the money and you get to do the dream and you get the spotlight. I mean, that's when you can kind of, in a way, relax still. Yeah, yeah. In terms of your game, what's one thing you've always kind of pride yourself in or the favorite part of your game? I pride myself on staying to what I'm good at, like in the post, punish him down low. Stepping mm-hmm. out, hitting 15 footers. Whenever it's open, I'll hit a three every now and then. But then the main part is to like get to the rim and get fouled and get to free throw line. Is there a player you model your game after? I play a lot like the Marcus Cousins. Mm-hmm. So that can shoot, that can stretch out and shoot the three and also dribble and get to mm-hmm. the rim by himself. 
So, yeah, DeMarcus Cousins. Definitely. I mean, I think he's a player that, unfortunately, obviously, he's had a lot of injuries recently. But in mean, his prime, when a couple of years ago, I mean, he was was the best center in the NBA. He was the one that started recreating the modern-day big man where he could bring the ball up still. And you almost are like a small forward, but he still is called a center position. Yeah, he was like, kind of like a point forward for the Kings. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. What's the reason that you kind of fell in love with basketball or why you love playing the game? I fell in love with the game at like five. And I was just I was just playing for a little bit. And then I, I was playing football for a little bit for like two years. And then mm-hmm. I realized like, I don't like this no more. So then I went to go mm-hmm. play basketball. And then like two years, I started to like really take it serious. And I started to see that I can really be good at this. So I just kept with it. Where do you see yourself in a year in terms of rankings, in terms of a player? Like, where do you see yourself? I see myself very high because I feel like I'll get a lot of recognition this year mm-hmm. from what, from the things that I did at the end of this year that can carry on. I feel like in a year I'll have, like, a lot more offers and a lot more recognition around the country. I know a lot of people, that when I was talking to all the Dream Vision people and just a lot of people in general, I mean, everyone talks about you obviously – Gonna, I mean, you've obviously blew up a lot more this summer, like I said, bringing in your first D1 offer. I think everyone believes it's going to truly translate over the next two years to truly be something special. Yes, yes, that's the plan. Who would you say in your life has been your biggest role model? My biggest role models have been my brothers because they've gotten off many offers from when they were in high school, and then they're pros right now. One's in college right now, but one's in the pros right now. And he's working hard, and they really showed me like, the steps by steps what I have to do to get to where they're at. And they don't ever mm-hmm. sugarcoat anything or tell me, or when I've done something wrong, they don't ever tell me like I did it right. They always keep me on my toes. A lot of people that have brothers and siblings, especially in the athletics world, like they realize how crucial and important. That's why I see so many brothers make it to the NFL, NBA, MLB together because they can always be able to push each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate them. I was uh, my brother Landon. I mean, just seeing what he always can do and just being there. I mean, brothers' bonds are pretty much unbreakable. Yeah. How would you say in your life God's helped you or kind of guide you down your path to get to where you're at today? God has really helped me in my 15 years of life because mm-hmm. on trips, I really needed him when I was like down, when I had a bad game. I would just sit, sit, sit in my bed and pray, and he would just make me feel better. It's hard mm-hmm. to explain. Yeah. I think anyone that's a believer understands that no matter how great things could be going, there's always going to be down times. It could be for a day or a week, a month, who knows. But, I mean, he's always just that comfort. Like you said, it's hard to explain. He just is able to comfort you. Yeah. Well, it's definitely been a pleasure having you on today, bro. Best of luck this high school season, obviously, from here on out. Can't wait to see what God's got in store for you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, no problem. God bless. God bless. All right, it's only been a couple of days since the last time you guys heard from me, but there's been some big ton stuff that's gone down that I need to hit up. Folks, Team USA, what happened there? I got you covered. California will be having college players make money off their name. LeBron James, did he get the Taco Tuesday trademark? Detroit Pistons, who's their new player? And so much more. All that is coming up next. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and my opinions on Shoe Zone. Stay right there. You're not going to miss it. Well, folks, that was an embarrassing loss. You guys know, to be honest, I don't know if I should admit this, but FIBA basketball is honestly one of my favorite basketball things. I think it's above college, and I think it might even be above NBA. I love FIBA. I love people representing where they're from. I love seeing people play with so much pride in something. A whole group of guys playing with pride representing something. I love that stuff. That's why I think I love FIBA. I love the Olympics. I love all this stuff so much. But, folks... This is an embarrassment. If you guys didn't hear, Team USA was upset by France, 89 to 79. I don't know what to say. It ended a 58 game win streak when we had it with NBA players on our Team USA roster. I, I don't know what to say, folks. Now, no one played exceptionally bad. The reason I think we lost, I hate saying this, I love it. It's, you never really hear this ever be said, but I think we lost because of Coach Popovich. Now let me explain. Donovan Mitchell had 29 points heading into the fourth quarter. The man was on fire, and he was leading us to have a seven-point lead heading into the fourth. 
Donovan Mitchell finished the game with 29 points. He only shot a couple shots the entire fourth quarter. How do you have that happen? Kemba Walker was the man with the ball the entire fourth quarter. He shot two for nine. Ten points in the game. Smart had a solid game. He 11. A lot of guys were good, but you can't win like that. As opposed to when you have France over there, Fournier had 22, 3, and 4. Gobert, 21, 16 rebounds. I mean, my goodness. Three blocks. It was exceptional. Natilla Kino was lighting us up from three. He had two massive big-time clutch threes. And Nicolo had 18 points. Remember him? He was the guy that talking about everyone might be saying he might be coming back to the NBA. Yeah, well. On the bright side, though, Serbia also was upset. It is interesting. Now, Team USA does have about two more games, depending on if they win tomorrow, which they better win in the morning. I don't know what to say, folks. I think the Olympics will be different. I think we're going to have a lot. Of, we're going to be stacked. All the players will be playing. I'm excited for that next year. But this was embarrassing. And another hindsight note about this, Drogic did speak up saying he didn't really care about watching this year. He said it's not fair. Now that FIBA changed the rules of the qualifications to where the qualification for the qualification, which is done during the season, eliminates all the top players, all those European guys. So, I mean, this list can go on forever. I'm just going to say some of the names that come to my mind right away. Goran Drogic, Grzegorz Wazingas, Rodion Kourouz, John and Musa. You got, I mean, all these players across the NBA from Europe, from other countries, as a matter of fact. Of course, you got guys like Joel Embiid, you got guys like Pascal Siakam, Sergio Baca. I mean, th this list goes on and on forever. Those guys didn't get a play because they were in season. So this, their countries weren't even able to qualify for the qualifiers. Not the best thing. We'll see what goes down, though. Now, though, California, big time props to the bill they passed. It was unanimous. I mean, they passed a bill now that allows college athletes to profit from the name. That's what's needed. I mean, come on now. It's not a salary, no, but people don't just get to use their face and the name for nothing. Big time props. I think all countries will be doing this soon. Now it's kind of going to be forced into it. LeBron James was denied Taco Tuesday trademark because it's a commonplace message. I mean, it is what it is, but we know who made it famous. So, yeah. Now, Joe Johnson, we know that big three MVP had, I mean, how many buzzer beaters game winners did he have? The man tore up, breaking all the records of the big three. NBA teams want him back. He's obviously working on multiple teams. Supposedly he has a workout with Brooklyn this week, but it's not likely because Detroit Pistons are especially. They're in the front runners. They're likely to land Joe Johnson to the team. Love that addition. They need another veteran in there. A guy can get buckets like Joe Johnson can. I don't know if he's going to start coming off the bench. Whatever it is, I love the deal. But that means that Brooklyn Nets have a spot because, let me let, listen to this. They could dump someone, yes. But Wilson Chandler, he has to be on the roster for five games. Then he can be suspended or shut down for the 20 games he's suspended. And he's put on suspension from the list, which opens up a roster spot. And that is where Carmelo Anthony will sign, folks. I'm almost guaranteeing I, I, Why not? Well, let me explain this. Wilson's not on a minimum contract, and I think Cy, Joe Sy would be willing to buy him out. He buys him out perfect if Melo performs. If not, Melo's got a 20-game 20, 20 window to kind of see what he can do. If he performs at a high level, we're going to keep him. If not, we let him go. It's plain and simple, folks. Kyle Kuzma was close to signing on a deal with, with Puma. Joining on to that big-time group, of course, we already know they got guys like DeAndre, they got guys like Marvin Bagley, they got RJ Barrett, Rudy Gay, Danny Green. I mean, this list keeps growing. Zaire Smith. Now they're adding Kyle Kuzma. Puma's up to something, folks. Now, Steve Ballmer has invested over $100 million in Inglewood Project. Obviously, he's getting ready to build the new stadium there, which looks magnificent. Cannot wait for that to be done. We know Steve Ballmer is not going to be slacking nothing. Now, Kevin Durant also said in a big, long article and interview that he would have returned to Oklahoma. Except for the fact that he returned there, obviously, with Golden State to the cupcake, to the slander, which turned him away. End of the day, that is what it is. They lost a chance? Oh, well. Look where Kevin Durant is now. He's at Brooklyn. Would have been interesting to see what would happen if this summer, if he was healthy still, obviously, went back to Oklahoma, presumably might have won a championship. That would have been very LeBron-like. Finally, the Memphis Grizzlies, they're not going to buy out. Andre Udala. They wanted to report to training camp. They, they find him very valuable. They want him to be meant to the young guys. They want all this to be done properly. They don't want to trade him. Or they don't want to buy him out. I don't know if the trade market would be if they're willing to do a trade. I don't know what's going on, but they do find him valuable. So it's not going to be as easy to get as possible as a lot of people were hoping. So we'll see. I do think he's not going to be on Memphis for too long if he does start the season there. I think a lot of teams need him. I say that's another spot for Brooklyn if they don't get one of those guys. Detroit would have been a good spot if they're not getting Joe Johnson. Then obviously the two, three main ones, Houston, Lakers, and Clippers. I think all of them are very fair options. Another underdog to see on that? Why not see what maybe Toronto does? You'd never know. They do need a small four. Of course, is it Kawhi Leonard? No. 
But what can you do at that small forward spot that's open pretty much? We will see. Although I think OG Hanabi will perform at a very high level this year. But who knows? Iguodala has been on like the fifth or sixth man. What can he do when he gets more opportunity? Who knows? I'd love to see it, though. But that's what I got for you guys on Shoes Zone. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm, of course, going to always end each episode recapping, giving you guys an update of what's going down in the NBA, NCAA, and what's going down in the world of basketball to close out every episode. Thank you so much everyone for joining me here today and thank you so much for tuning in during this dream vision series now i want to let you guys know something there's a lot of players you guys might not have heard from during this series well guess what they're still gonna be have a chance to hear from them as i'm gonna have so many guys come on about their commitments in the future you're not going to miss that but for now the next four episodes are gonna be big time episodes you're not going to miss you're gonna be able to hear from four schools and who they've got signed up to come into their school in the future you're not going to miss that then that'll lead us right into the compton magic series which i know has been hyped up for a while and you're not going to miss hearing from guys like mikey williams dalen terry evan mobley jalen clark and so many more all their episodes will be coming up in the near future. Well, I want to stay up to date on that, though. Make sure to go and follow me at Zach Shoemaker on Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date. I promise you, you're not going to regret it. As for this, you guys are not going to miss it. Please go and subscribe, like, comment, give a five-star review. Do whatever you can to keep promoting Shoes Views. I truly do appreciate all the support, you guys. It means a lot. With that being said, though, Shoes is out. Everyone go be the light of God, and God bless.